Everybody got to open notebook B, is happy? All right, so we, we scroll past the text cells where it says who wrote this stuff. And we're going to run the first two cells again to have everything imported. And we'll check out the goals of this notebook. So here now we're going to write our first function in Python. Maybe probably uh, some of you already wrote one. And uh, we're going to learn how to extract the case-based data, which is actually stored in, the, in, the, in our object. Because sometimes we, wanna, we want to process it because we, are, like, we want to apply our own methods to the data so we learn how to extract them and put them back in so we can mo uh, modify them. We're going to use it to filter the data using the convolution theorem, and we're going to obtain a little bit of a better understanding between the relationship between the case space and image space. So please, uh, for the first programming task, which is coming up, I give, give, you get a couple of minutes for this one. You can uh, please uh, load the acquisition data as before, and then you extract some variables to extract the dimensions of the data that actually you loaded in so we can know what the data structure is. So please uh, follow the programming instructions and then we can uh, meet up in after the solution cell. Did you get it to run? Yes. Don't worry, but I think they... Okay, nice. So, so everybody completed the task, so we can look at the result. So here we see that the size of case space is 256 points times 4 times 512. So now I have a quick guess, which is what? What's the 256? So we have uh, three options. We have the coil, number of coils, the number of lines we acquire and the number of points along each line. Number of lines. 256 is number of lines. 4 is? Yes. <laughs> and uh, the 512 is then the number of points along each uh, reader line, which makes sense because our image was square and we loaded it in and we didn't pre-process it yet. So the next uh, cell which we can uh, call is then just you see then do we just pre-process the data quickly and look at it again and there you can see that the last dimension changed which uh, is the effect of the remo remove the readout over sampling because now we removed every second point along the readout and uh, thereby uh, in our current data there's no artifact that would arise if we wouldn't do it but we have less data to continue and our reconstructions will go faster because then now we just cut off stuff we are not interested in. This is just a re quick recap on the convolution theorem, 
which is that if we have two functions and we have a convolution, uh, they perform a convolution on each other, we Fourier transform it, it becomes a multiplication in k-space. And this can be used to uh, nicely filter the data. So because if we, for example, have a Gaussian function in, uh, in image space and we Fourier transform it, we have it also the uh, Gaussian of different width in k-space. So now there's a quick note on how to define a function on Python. And uh, you see that you write def, the function name, you give it a list of arguments, you do something with the code and the arguments, and then you return something. And as Chris said, the indentation is important, like a tab. It's very practical to use these four spaces here and then keep it consistently. And uh, now we have this, uh, for example, there you see the definition of a Gaussian function. You have x, mu, and the sigma. And uh, if you run the next two plots, uh, next two cells, you see that uh, you just plot the line through the Gaussian we just decided to plot. So this is the case base weight which we're going to apply. So currently it has a width of 10. And um, it's defined in case space, so it runs over the case space indices. And now uh, we just do something. Uh, we we make, make it the correct uh, size. And then we uh, extract the data. So this is an important. Uh, this is an important uh, method here. You can see it's called as array. And as array, it returns you the data uh, as an array in NumPy. So this is the way to get the data out of the object. Because now, because we encapsulated the software such that it holds the data, you want to be able to extract and fill it in again. So as array uh, lets you get it out, and fill lets you put it back in. So the next, uh, in the next uh, set, you can just run it. And uh, uh, you multiply, basically, the, what we apply the convolution theorem to multiply the k-space data with the, with, the, uh, with the weight we computed. And then we reconstruct it using the process method after we filled it back in. And then we plot the image. And you can see, yes? Um, there are some problems with reading in the data, actually. Do we need, yeah. to, do we need to stop and close the other notebook completely, or...? Uh, we would recommend it, and what's, what, what does it say? Ah, him? Yeah, All right. So I just copied over the code, yeah. but then it gets an error for this Yeah, you one. have to close the other notebook because there's five lines. Oh, right. ah, yeah, okay. Sorry. Close the other notebook and then restart for what you want to do. Uh, restart is not necessary. Okay. okay. And hold. Yeah, so uh, it's important to close and hold the note before running the next one. All right. So what can we, what do we see here? What happened to the image? It got, we multiplied it with a Gaussian in K space and it got blurred in image space. And that's because we Basically, in image space, perform the convolution by doing the multiplication in case space. And now the task is, now this is a bit too blurry, but uh, because we... It's probably good to see if everybody is there first. Because okay, sure. That, that's true. Yes. It keeps on going. And that's true. So before we go to the question, is, uh, did everybody arrive with the machine at the blurred image? No? Run it. It's the running? running? Okay. <laughs> okay, so that's... Did you arrive at the image? Yeah, okay. Good, so it's also blurred. Okay, very good. All right. So I think everybody, if nobody's complaining, then we move on. So... Uh, if we make the width of our weight larger, then the blurring should be stronger or weaker? The blurring should get stronger. Okay, let's see. Uh, because now the programming task is to actually go back in the cell where you define sigma and then go through it again and look at the reconstruction again. So you just vary the sigma between 1 and 100, not in steps of 1, but maybe in steps of something bigger than 1. 
and just look at it. No, I mean you 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 just extracted the as an array and you have it. Wait, that's true. Where do we put it in? We fill it again and repeat the. Ah yeah, so you you need to start with the with the cell where it says pre-process data. I'm sorry. Uh, you do need to run cell apply case uh, retrieve case based data. Yeah, the pre-process acquisition data, the one over the quick surf. And... No, that should be done after you change. No, you change the sigma. Ah, sorry, you need to run all the cells all the way down. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I'm sorry, I forgot to say. Yeah, it just takes vary sigma and you go down and you see the effect of a different sigma. So I automatically always run all the cells. It's uh, yeah, sorry, yeah. I was right. That's true. Yeah. Okay. Did you get it to run? Changing different sigma values. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Yes? It is better with larger sigma, but I don't understand, like, what is this space filtering? Like, it is like what you will take into account. So, uh, explain. Yeah, we'll we, we exp explain uh, in, in a second, yes. Yeah. So did everybody get the uh, system effect? So what happens if we make the case space weighting very broad? Then, then we have a sharp image. Which me uh, and if we make it very narrow, then we have a blurred image. And this is because so this there's two ways to explain this because the first way is that be, what is wide becomes very in case space becomes very narrow in image space and vice versa. That has to do with the Fourier transform, because if you have a delta peak and your Fourier transform, it is very broad, and of course it's reciprocal. So what this means is that have you, if you want to have a convolution with a white kernel in image space, which gives you a blurry image, if you transform this into a k-space weighting, which becomes a multiplication, it becomes a very narrow function. This means a narrow function weighting a multiplication in k-space with a narrow function kernel, uh, not a kernel, a narrow function, just gives you the center of the case space, gives a lot of stress onto the center of the case space, but it suppresses the influence of the outside of the case space. In the center of the case space, you have the image information about the structure and the large structures, and the high resolution features, they are all in the outside of case space. But also the noise is in the outside of case space, so when you try to suppress noise by smoothing it, you might destroy some resolution which uh, that you then convolved out of your image, basically. So this was just to uh, show this reciprocal res uh, relation between the two spaces and um, show you how to get uh, data out of the object and load it back in. So, uh, sorry. So we recap, so to recap it, we uh, 
learn to access the data, how to define some stuff in uh, Python. We uh, visited the convolution theorem, and now we know what uh, that we either can convolve something, how we can uh, uh, actually uh, maybe suppress noise in an image, but we know with that we need to be careful not to destroy our resolution with it. All right, everybody is still back.